I'm one of those people who gets a post-dispatch every morning. The news, the sports, yeah, the comics. Now we've done stories that are news related and we've done some sports stories, but Kara Vanager's story is about the comics because one of these, while it's nationally syndicated, is actually a local story and a local success story. People ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And cartoonist is almost never on anyone's mouths, you know? And when you don't really like see anyone do it, it doesn't really feel like something that you can do. Which is why becoming a nationally syndicated cartoonist wasn't even on the radar for artist Christina Steen Stewart when she was selected to inherit the long-running part of the city strip from creator Mark Tatuli in May 2020. It wasn't until I started working at Star Clipper, the comic book store in The Loop, where I started looking at the creators behind these comics. I didn't even consider comics as a career until I saw Brittany Williams do the art on the Samurai Jack comic. And I had been following her forever, and so I knew what she looked like. I knew she was a black woman. And then when I saw her stuff in front of me that I could hold on the shelf, I was like, that's when it clicked. That like, why don't I just try and do comics? Steens began to explore this form of visual storytelling and soon was being published in a variety of anthologies, including Elements, Fire, which won an Eisner Award in 2018. She also collaborated with writer Ivy Noel Weir on the graphic novel Archival Quality. I usually say the best way to become a better cartoonist is by continuing to create. Um, I feel like I learned more from drawing Archival Quality than from like, any class I've ever taken. Consistently producing work helped her to build momentum and expand her range. But Steens also credits the supportive comics community with not only her growth, but also her exposure to what was possible as an artist. Wanting to give back, Steens came up with a program that has been inspiring and educating comics fans for almost a decade. I created Comics University where every Wednesday during the summer you can learn something about comics. You can learn history of comics, myths in comics, women in comics. It was a really great opportunity for me to get that community building skills and you know I was reaching out to people in St. Louis like what can you teach? And after years of encouraging others to share their knowledge at Comics University, Steens was asked to do the same at Webster University. I have definitely remodeled the syllabus to focus on not just the skills of cartooning, but the skills of being a working artist as well, you know, because you don't want to throw someone out into the deep end like, well, you know how to draw, good luck, you know? You want to teach them about how to actually promote themselves, how to read contracts, how to pay your taxes, what kind of jobs do you want to take for the experience, and which ones do you want to take for the money. As a freelancer, uh, there's a lot that you have to learn on the job, and it would be a lot better if you learned it when you were in school, <laughs> you know, paying for that information. While teaching others to develop their artistic style and business savvy, Steens was focusing on the same things in her own career. Once I was a full-time freelancer, I wanted to do uh, my own stories as well. So I did a Encyclopedia Brown fan comic, I did a sci-fi comic for myself, and after continuing to put out my own work, uh, people reached out to me for different projects. And one of those projects would turn out to be the chance of a lifetime. Sheena Wolf reached out to me from Andrews McNeil Syndication, and she was like, I love your work. Um, are you interested in syndicated comics? So I said, yes, <laughs> I am, tell me more. <laughs> so I read many years of Heart of the City just to get a good understanding of the comic, the characters, all the different kinds of stories that were in it. But before she landed the job, Steens had to do several weeks of auditions to make sure she was the right fit for the strip. So every single day this, the stories had to be self-contained, but it had to be an overarching story. And then I also had to do Sundays, which are different. It's a whole puzzle to figure out. And um, I did that about four times <laughs> with different stories, different character designs. They were more concerned about getting the writing correct over the drawing because they already knew that I had the drawing skill. But with this, they're like, we believe the art's fine. Can you tell a joke in four panels? 
in addition to the expectations of taking on the writing and illustrating of a long-running, well-loved comic strip, Steens also experienced the kind of pressure that is unique to pioneers. When I first got the job, I was like, okay, I want to see how many other like black women are doing it. And there are two others, Bianca Eunice, who uh, is a part of Six Chicks, and the other one is Barbara Brandon Craft from where I'm coming from. It's a lot of pressure on your shoulders, you know, being like one of three, especially one of three nationally syndicated. <laughs> Jackie Orms, who was the first black uh, female cartoonist, was not nationally syndicated. The one she's most recognized for is, is Torchy Brown. But yeah, that's who's on my arm. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> it was really heartwarming because a lot of the comics that I read when I was growing up that featured black families like Curtis or Jumpstart, like those are still going on today. And those creators reached out to me, like welcome to the like comics family. It's two sides of it. One of them is really cool to be a part of, you know, that history of, you know, of being a black cartoonist, but the other one is like, oh, it's kind of crazy that I've already talked to all of them, <laughs> you know? So it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> After being inspired by trailblazing artists like Jackie Orms, Steens is hoping to do the same for others by being intentionally visible. As I was teaching a history of black comic creators at the library, there was a, a girl who was not even in the class. She was just walking through the library and saw this out of the corner of her eye. And she was like, I've always been into like illustration and drawing and I didn't know what I wanted, but it was really cool to like see you up there talking about comics because I, I feel like that's something that I can do now. And I'm just like, <laughs> it's like, it's all happening. <laughs> In addition to changing perceptions as to who can create what kinds of art, Steens also hopes to build awareness around the incredible diversity within the comics community itself. So many times people are like, oh, well, you know, comics are becoming more social justice y and so there are more, you know, women and, you know, people of color doing it. I'm like, we've always been here. I think it's more about media representation, <laughs> you know? If you watch a TV show and someone goes into a comic shop, all you see are white dudes, you know? But if you go into any comic shop like in St. Louis, that's not the case. I'm hoping that all the work that I do and all the work that everyone else in my community does, you can see that it's rather diverse. It's just, it's taking some time for the spotlight to be on more than one type of person. For Living St. Louis, I'm Kara Vandenberg.